All right, let's look at question two here. Um, the issue when you're trying to take the square root of this problem is that um, you have obviously the exponents are written as fractions. So it seems to be a little difficult, but it's actually not too bad. Um, what you actually want to do is think of it as such. So what did I do here? Well, maybe this is not clear. Let me make it look clear. This is supposed to be one-third. So I rewrote two-thirds as one-third raised to the second power. And that's legit because the power rule says when you raise something to another power, you multiply. So one-third times two is two-thirds. So we, written, we wrote it as such. And here's the brilliant move. Now that both of these are d to the one-third, I can let d to the one-third equal another variable, which I'm going to call x. So now I can say 4x squared minus 9x minus 9 equals 0. So what I did was I took something that was fairly horrendous looking, and I replaced it with x, and now we have something that we're right here where we're pretty comfortable with solving. So we have to decide how we want to factor this, and there's a multitude of ways. The easiest way that you always want to try first is just basic factoring. So you, we draw two sets of parentheses, and we ask ourselves, what times what is 4x squared? Now this is a little tricky because there's two options that are available. We can say 4 and 1 or 2 and 2. So I'm going to go with 4 and 1. And I haven't worked this problem out, so maybe this works, maybe this doesn't. We'll find out. And then we have to do the same. Now, we, after we do, say, 4x times x is 4x squared, we work on the back. So we say, what times what is 9? In this case, I'm going to go with 3 and 3, because 3 and 3 is 9. From here, what I need to happen is I need it such that when I multiply these two terms and these two terms, the results have to su subtract or add to give me 9. So notice 4 times 3 is 12, so we have 12x, and 3 times 1 is 3, so 3x. So this part here is going to give me 12x, this is part is going to give 3. Can I add or subtract 12x and 3x to get 9? Well, obviously if I subtract, that'll work out. That'll get me 9. But what I really want is a negative 9, because there's a negative sign here. So what I really want is a negative 12x and a positive 3, because that'll give me negative 9x. So we go ahead and do that, and we arrive at such. And so from here, um, we can use the fact that anything times 0 is 0. So if this times this gives me 0, it either is such that the first part is equal to 0, so 4x plus 3 equals 0, or the second part, x minus 3 equals 0. And from here, it's basic algebra. We just solve. So we subtract 3. And this gives me 4x equals negative 3. And then to finish it off, we divide by 4. Divide by 4. x is negative 3 fourths. And we do the same thing on the other side, except it's just adding 3. So x equals 3. So the final result is x equals negative 3 fourths and x equals 3. Except... I made a silly mistake, and this is the very common silly mistake that occurs. Because the question is not asking me to solve for x. The question is asking me to solve for d. So I have to recall that d to the one-third is x, right? So we actually have d to the one-third is equal to negative three-fourths, and d to the one-third is equal to 3. Now, to finish this problem off, we have to get rid of that 1 third. And the way that we get rid of the 1 third is we raise both of these to the third. Recall we said that when we raise something to another power, we multiply. So 3 times 1 third is going to give me 1, which is what we desire because we just want d. Now over here when we, when we cube or raise 
both numerator and denominator to the third power, we're doing negative 3 times negative 3 times negative 3 for the numerator, which is negative 27. And in the denominator, we're doing 4 times 4 times 4, which is 64. Again, 4 times 4 is 16. 16 times 4 is 64. Over here on the other side, it's a little bit less tedious. This is 3 to the third, which we know is 27 from before, right? We got negative 27 here, so that means that this one over here has to be 27. And that's our answer. So the trick here is one of the biggest mistakes that is made is that at the very end, students forget that they're solving for D and not X. So just make sure you are always answering the question. Um, again, how did we go about solving the problem? The slick move in the very beginning is to r realize that we can rewrite here d to the two-thirds is d to the one-third raised to the second power, which allows me over here to say d is uh, to the one-third is another variable x, which allows me here now to have a very simple equation that I can factor out. I get my two values of x here and here. I replace it with d to the one-third, because x is d to the one-third. Simplify and solve, and you get your answer. Hopefully that makes sense, and I'll see you in the next video.